89.9 um, FM, Radio Garden City, Garden City Radio, Port Harcourt is our radio station. It's your station, my station. Um, this is the station um, we use to um, share information and receive information, all factual uh, informations. Uh, today is the 27th of um, November 2019. We're drawing closer and closer to, um, to Christmas. Now, um, what is on ground? for um, River State, what is on ground for Niger Delta, what is on ground um, for Nigeria, and how do all of these things, whatever they are, um, how do they um, affect us um, in our state, and how do they um, affect us in, um, in our region? Those are the things that are very, very uh, critical to us. There are so many things. Um, the, the burning one right now is the... Um, the bill, the bill to to hang people that um, uh, that the if the national assembly approves it, then it means that people we have voted for um, went there to pass bills to hang um, to hang the people that have voted uh, for them. Uh, these are rights uh, issues. Um, at what point does a country? Um, but I believe it is worse in um, it is worse in Africa. It is worse in Nigeria because we're lawless and um, uh, people get away uh, with telling lies and making up stories about uh, other people and posting them on what uh, is supposed to be a useful tool. That is the tool of social media. The tool of being able to be in Abonima and know what is happening in the White House because the information has been released and you have access to, uh, to that information per time as it is happening. This is actually supposed to be um, uh, something that is uh, a developmental issue. We have moved, uh, we have moved forward, but particularly in Africa and specifically uh, in Nigeria, um, when good things happen, when uh, things that are supposed to uh, to move us forward um, is is accessed by us, unfortunately, um, we use it negatively. And so there is this saying or uh, a laughing situation where uh, you and I may say, "Oyibona um, won't you?" But that type of thing, um, Nigerians use it for bad, as opposed to um, the, uh, the white man who created it or, or brought it about uses it uh, um, for the betterment of the society and for the betterment of, um, of, of the people. Now, if we look back a little bit and we begin to even say to ourselves, at what point actually in Nigeria um, did we find ourselves where some people will make outrageous uh, statements against other people, say things that are untrue, make threats that are, um, uh, that are evil in content against, uh, against other people? And if you, if you look at it, it actually goes back um, to the point of um, when Good Luck Jonathan uh, became the president of, um, of Nigeria. Um, uh, some of the things that were being said um, about him, some of the things that were being said about uh, the people that worked with him, uh, the threats that were made, um, were hate speeches. And so those those were th that is the time that this actually started i e um when a group will say um if if you want to be the president of nigeria you have to um change from one religion to the other uh, uh somebody will say as recent as a week or two ago uh, someone will say um we will never 
allow uh, an Igbo president in Nigeria. I, I mean, these, these are hate speeches. So what then do is law? What does the law say that is hate speech? Now, people like Falana, them lawyers, have said that there are laws already in place that handles or has taken care of issues like uh, detriment of a character. Uh, when somebody accuses you of things or lies about you and it defames your character, there are laws that enables you to, uh, to take that person on. Those laws already exist in, in Nigeria. So, if those laws exist in Nigeria, then you have to ask yourself, the people and the person and the government and the political party and the senators of these political parties that are supporting um, this hate speech bill that have allowed and the, uh, the senators and the representatives and the state assembly uh, members and the governors that have allowed this to get to the point of uh, second reading, um, you have to ask yourself, uh, first of all, are they asleep? Are they aware? And if they are not asleep and if they are aware, um, what are they going to do about it? And so why are our representatives... How did it get past first reading? And how did it get to second reading? And so what is it that, therefore, you ask yourself, if somebody is representing me in the Senate and you in the Senate, and this has been allowed to go to second reading, and if we're not careful, it will be passed into law, what are they doing? And even you and I, what are we doing? You, you know, and this is where you and I must take responsibility for ourselves, for our lives, and for our rights. If you have a representative and a bill has gone through second reading and is being threatened to be passed into law, of course, it has to come down to the, um, uh, to the state assembly uh, for, uh, for domestication and all of that. But quite honestly, it should not even have gone past the first reading. It should have been shut down. And here we are. Now, take this uh, scenario. Let us assume that when this bill was raised, the whole of the 19 states of the North were in support of the bill. And let us assume that the whole of the 17 states of the South, the Yoruba states, the Ndibo states, and the Niger Delta states, which make up 17 states in the National Assembly and 17 states in the House of Representatives, if they opposed the bill, each and every one of our senators in the three zones of the South opposed the bill, and every senator in the north of the three zones of the 19 states are for the bill. The bill will, will still go through. You can't shoot it down. You can't pull it down. And so this is where we come backwards and say, how is this even possible that we are in a country that is supposed to be equal and yet we're not equal? Therefore, we are in a country where laws can be passed that are clearly targeted at certain people, certain states, and certain region of the country, and yet it can pass. So we have a country, supposedly, that has two laws and two ways of doing uh, things. So we go back, right back to the Constitution, the 1999 Constitution. So the 1999 constitution is our problem because you have a situation where even 
allocation is shared by state and by local government. And when allocation is shared by state, the north gets 19 and the south gets 17. When it is shared by local government, the north gets um, 419, uh, 419 or 417 thereabout, and the whole of the southern state gets 300 and, uh, and something. So whichever way you look at the National Assembly that is actually um, the arm of government that represents the people, the inequality there is pitted against the people of southern Nigeria and it favors the people of the 19 uh, northern states, supposedly, um, of, of northern uh, Nigeria, because we now have even the Middle Belt having their own, uh, their own argument. But staying within the, uh, the bill that is looking to kill Nigerians for exercising basic human rights that is recognized and um, the, uh, the free, which is freedom of speech and expression and also the, uh, the, the human, uh, the, the African uh, Charter of uh, Human Rights as well supports um, uh, these, these rights that you have a right to express yourself. Now, there must be laws that guide you and I so that I cannot, in, in the process of expressing myself, I cannot tell a lie against you and get away with it. So if that be the case, that we are saying that there are laws to guide against that. And so if somebody says something, there was some time, uh, a time ago, somebody wrote things about me and um, I took it on and took it on all the way to where the person was writing from. The person is a Nigerian and he was writing from a university that is based in the, that is in the UK. And because he was writing and referencing and referring to the university as where he was writing from. I got in touch with the university. My lawyers wrote to the university in the UK and told the UK that the university, that so-so person is defaming my character in Nigeria. And the person is saying that they are writing from your university. So I want to know, are you the person, are you the university that is authorizing this person to write these things? And the university wrote, replied back and totally disassociated themselves from the writings he was doing. And not only that, they told him to stop using the name of the university in his writing, to stop saying that he was writing from the university because it was implicating, it was Im implicating the university. And so this shows very clearly that laws work when you want them to work. It's just that Nigeria is lawless. Our leaders are lawless. They don't obey the law. There is no rule of law. If not, people cannot sit down in their bedrooms, listen to what somebody else has said, and say, ah, this person is from Niger Delta. Why will he say such a thing? This person is from uh, uh, Igbo. Why will he say such a thing? We will raise a bill. We will kill them. So because right now, today, the people that are critical of this government are not people of the government. They are people that are outside the government. They are people of another political party. They are people of another uh, culture, another religion. So basically, therefore, in my opinion, what is being targeted is you and I from speaking our, from speaking our mind because now, okay, for instance, you look at, um, we're hearing in the news, and I think this is about the second or third time where there's been news that the, the EFCC has no case against uh, Diziani. This is not the first time I have seen this. But yet, every time, even two weeks or how many weeks ago, 
We've been told house, uh, uh, they've taken houses, they've taken uh, diamond, they've taken this, they've taken that. And then two weeks later, they come back and say they don't have anything against this person. So you begin to wonder, what type of institutions do we have in Nigeria? And what type of people have we put at the helm of this institution? You have an institution where um, that is run by a man that is, is not confirmed. He's more or less acting in the capacity of what he's doing. And yet he has headed this, uh, this body for over, uh, for over four years. This is, uh, he, he's moved into the second tenure with, uh, with the federal, uh, with the federal government. So basically, um, what we should be looking out for as Nigerians, to protect our rights is everybody is a rights activist, whether you want it or not. If somebody does something to you and you don't like it and you want to act on it, you're an activist because you're doing something to protect your rights. So activism is therefore not a, a job. It is a passion. It is a right. You must speak up for yourself. And people are, people should get away from this mentality that it is a certain people that do activism. It is a certain people that should take risks for, uh, for, uh, for us. You know, so if we must survive and if we must have a country in which our rights are guaranteed, <laughs> I think that in one waterside or in one mansion or in Abonima or in Abuja, wherever you are, if you don't fight for your rights, your rights will be infringed upon. And we will find ourselves in a situation that happened at the Second World War in Germany, where they started picking people, different types of people, the Jews, the um, the gypsies, the Catholics, the this, the that, they started picking people one by one. When they get to the other person, as long as they've not come to you, you think you're safe until such a time as by the time they came for the last person, there was nobody else. You know, so this bill is unacceptable. It's unacceptable. We cannot continue to accept a situation where People are afraid even to answer their name when people call them. People are afraid to say, yes, I am Aunt Q. Briggs. I mean, you're living in fear. You're living in fear. You're governed by fear. You're ruled by fear. If this bill, uh, my, um, the senator I admire a lot, um, and I, I for Aberibe or, um, is somebody that said that if this law they want to push through was on ground when Jonathan was president, all of these people terrorizing our rights today will all be dead. They will all be dead. Because half of the things they said about uh, Jonathan's government, half of the things, if not more, that they said about Jonathan as a person are all lies. The monies that they said were stolen are all lies. We're dealing with a government that really does not recognize the truth. It doesn't, the, the people within the government have taken you and I for granted that they tell us any lie they want and we just well, I, let me disassociate myself because I don't accept trouble. Who is going to protect you from the trouble that you don't want since you're not prepared to protect yourself? 